Welcome to this Click Explains Finance video. This week, a fairly topical one, we're at that time of year, autumn 2018, when quite a few people head off towards university or the equivalent. Uh, so a video on six money tips for children leaving home. Now this is whether you're leaving home to get a job or leaving home to do more study. So, can be quite scary. Your parents aren't necessarily gonna be stumping up for you for much longer, so what should you be thinking about? The earlier you think about it, the better. So the background here, as P.T. Barnum, if you've seen The Greatest Showman, you'll know who that is, said money is a terrible master, but an excellent servant. Now, early in your life, it can seem like you are controlled by money, by student loans, by debt, and so on, but the faster you get that under control, the quicker it becomes your servant. And at the end, I'll try and show you how powerful it can be once you get a grip on it. Now, be your own person is tip number one. So there are six coming up. These are all short, do email me at the end for more information. What do I mean by that? Be yourself, everyone else is already taken, said Oscar Wilde. So, when it comes to money, what are we saying here? We're saying watch out for peer pressure. There will always be people out there who've got more money than you to start with, maybe their parents were more generous, that's life. Or there'll be people out there who've got less money than you to start with, but are prepared to spend other people's money by borrowing it. Watch out. You've got to be your own person. Decide what level of expenditure you're comfortable with and then try to resist comparisons and fear of missing out. Social media is terrible for this. On Facebook, almost hourly, you can look up and find your friends doing something more exciting, somewhere more exciting, and you think, oh, all I should do is write a check, hop on a plane, and watch out because there are people who will shovel money at you when you're young, gambling that you will be able to pay it back. And we'll come back to them in just a moment. Thirdly, Set your own budget. Now, budgeting doesn't sound like the most exciting thing to do when you leave home, but it's fairly essential. And it's one of those life skills. Do it early, do it young, it'll kind of stay with you. So what is it? Well, I can't do the whole of budgeting in just a couple of minutes here, but the first steps would include what? Budgets are a mathematical confirmation of your suspicions, said A.A. Latimer once. So what are we aiming to do here? Very briefly, keep a regular spending record. And the more detail, the better. So maybe you do it uh, weekly, maybe you do it monthly, uh, what is that record? Well, aside from writing down what you're spending, if you can, keeping that record, try then and divide it into stuff I've got to spend, rent, bills, and so on, and stuff that, frankly, I enjoy spending, but don't necessarily have to. And look to make economies on both sides. It's not just a case of saying, I'm not having a coffee each morning. I mean, perhaps you like having a coffee each morning. Do look at the utility bills, look at your rental agreement, and so on, and try and cut down those costs as much as you do the kind of what I call discretionary stuff. Share communal bills fairly. You might be moving into rented property for the first time. If you're going to university, for example, try and make sure it's not just you that's you know, on the hook, if you like, for all the utility bills, the council tax, uh, the water, uh, you know, the, the Netflix, all that kind of stuff and so on. So share those out. Don't leave yourself as the only person who's basically trying to manage the house for four or five people. And thirdly, shop around and shop efficiently. Now, what do I mean by that? It means, you know, don't go down to the local corner shop where you probably get fleece for every packet of hobnobs you buy. Think about buying in bulk, okay? Use the discounters, shop on a weekly or monthly basis rather than a kind of just-in-time emergency basis because, not surprisingly, that will work out more expensively. That's just one tip. Number two, then, get to grips with debt. Now, an awful lot of people uh, take on debt as students studying through university and so on. Watch out for it. If you think nobody cares if you're alive, try missing a couple of car payments, said Earl Wilson once to make the point. Now, all I'm gonna do here is just suggest that number one, understand debt. Understand the different types of debt, how it works, what AERs are and so on. I'll cover all of that in more detail in other videos. But broadly speaking, first of all, what debt is, it, is there out there that is largely unavoidable for most people? So student loans. A lot of people do borrow, but you've got to get to grips early with how much you can borrow. So for example, living cost allowances and tuition fees. Living cost allowances are capped according to your parents' income. So how much is going to be coming in? How much do you think you're going to spend by comparison? How are you going to fill the gap? Are you going to be working to fill the gap? Have you got other sources of income? Or are you going to be borrowing? If you're going to be borrowing, make sure it's agreed. Authorised overdrafts. Beware of just dipping into your current account, going into overdraft, without telling the bank first. Thirdly, mortgages. Some people will be in the fortunate position of being able to put down a deposit to buy a property. Not maybe straight away when they leave home, but a few years afterwards. But again, get to grips before you do so. 
with the different types. And I've done separate videos on this. If you've got a fixed deal, for example, low interest rate for two years, make sure you understand how long that two year period is gonna last, keep a track on it, and what's gonna happen at the end of it, and what you might need to do to mitigate what's called a standard variable rate, which will be much higher. So, understand as a minimum the three types of loan that often a lot of people find they do need to take out at some point, and then be careful with others that I would call avoidable for most people. Unauthorised overdrafts, expensive, not a good idea. Personal loans, credit cards, expensive, not a good idea. Now I know you can get 0% deals on credit cards, and if you're clever, you can move around borrowing money at 0%. Great. If you're on it to that extent, I don't have a problem with that, but be very, very careful not to lose track of when those 0% deals expire. Thirdly, watch out for emergency loans in particular. Do not get to the end of the month, think, oh, what can I do with a few hundred quid? I'll borrow it from a loan shark or a payday loan lender. Expense, the interest rate will be horrendous. All right, you don't want to get involved with that kind of debt if you can possibly avoid it. Okay, number three, don't ignore detail. This is all part of your financial toolkit, if you like. Now, what do I mean by that? With great power comes an even greater electricity bill, said some wag once. Essentially, your parents probably did a lot of this stuff before, now you're responsible. So lease agreements, you're renting a property, understand the lease agreement, understand when there will be rent reviews, for example, understand how you might lose your deposit, under what circumstances can the landlord just take that away. Understand how you're gonna structure the lease agreement. Is it gonna be one of you, if you're sharing you know, a house with a number of people, whose name's gonna go down on that agreement, who's ultimately responsible for it, and are you allowed to bring other people in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, read the small print. It's not exciting, but it's important. Number two, utility contract, same thing. If you've got a good deal on your gas, on your electricity, how long does it last? What will happen when it changes? Because utility companies are notorious for moving around the amount of money we pay for things like gas and electricity. And thirdly, council tax. Don't forget about that one. It is driven by where you live, so watch out if you're coming to be a student in London for the first time, maybe quite a bit more than say your parents are used to paying, and if you're living by yourself, if you can afford to do that, maybe you're eligible for the 25% discount. So keep an eye on that kind of stuff. In other words, this is not very exciting stuff, but it will literally pay you back to get a handle on it. And finally, start saving. They might be thinking, with all this other stuff to pay for, how am I going to start saving? But this is where, as P.T. Barnum put it, you start to think about how to turn money into your servant rather than your master. If you can squeeze out a little bit of money from that budgeting process I talked about, then, as Johann Wolfgang and Goethe put it, many people take no care of their money until they come to the end of it, and others do just the same with their time. You'll avoid that trap. All right, in other words, look after your future self as much as you can, not just your current self. You will look back in your 40s and 50s and go, oh, I wish I'd saved a bit more, or I'm glad I did. Now, easy for me to say, but just give you an example. Time is on your side in a moment. Time is on your side as a young person. The power of invested pound grows over time much more effectively if you save young, and every little helps to borrow someone else's slogan. Now, what do I mean by that? If you could, I say if, if you could find uh, 100 pounds and you could save that every month over 40 years. How powerful could that be? I want to make some assumptions. 2%, 5%, and 8% growth. Not guaranteed. Not at all guaranteed. It's purely illustrative. If you invest in equities, your capital might be at risk. I have to give those warnings out and so on. But let's say you could, and you won't know up front, achieve a sort of low, middling, and high rate of growth. £100 per month over 40 years. The green bit is the physical cash you've put away. Looks like that. Same amount at any growth rate. Now let's say you have invested in something that generates these three growth rates. The pink is the power of compounding. It's almost a free lunch. It's the bit you haven't had to do any work for, if you like, and look how much of it, let's say 5% growth, is pink rather than green. More than doubled your money, all right? No guarantees it'll happen, but you can see the, the point. So 100 pounds over 40 years could be 73,000 pounds at 2%, 148,000 pounds at 5%, and yeah, admittedly, punchy assumption, I don't deny it, 324,000 pounds at 8% for somebody who's prepared to take a bit more investment risk, let's say. So, sizable amounts of money when you look back and say, oh, crikey, glad I tucked away that little amount early. So there you have it, six tips for people about to leave home. Uh, lots of ground covered, so editor at killick.com with questions. And if you'd like some guidance on other videos relevant to this one, then either ping me an email or it's killick.com forward slash learn 
and tax-effective savings would be a good tab to start with.